Hi, my name is Atlas and I'm the Materials and Finance Lead of the Canaponics team. Our purpose was to transform cannabis growing into a simple hobby for the average person by creating an affordable automated grow box. Since we aim to design our box to accommodate a single plant at a time, we also wanted to optimize the growth process to maximize yield. Hence, our design objectives included keeping the production costs under 500 Canadian dollars, developing a vapor pressure deficit system that maintains temperature and humidity levels to within 1%, and also making sure that our design is 90% recyclable. In addition, due to licensing issues, we had to use a tomato plant in our experiments and testing as opposed to a cannabis plant. You'll get a glimpse of this tomato plant later in this video. Hi, my name is Garda. I'm the hydroponics lead for the canaponics team and the quarantine assembly supervisor. The canaponics unit is a small scale, all-in-one hydroponic unit to grow cannabis indoors. Hydroponics is simply just a method of growing plants without the use of soil. So there's three main requirements that the plant has, and therefore three main systems for this unit. We have air, light, and water. For air, a climate control system measures the temperature and humidity of the, the grow chamber at all times, and then will respond by modulating the fan speed to uh, attempt to bring that vapor pressure deficit, which is a function of temperature and humidity, uh, to a precise level. For light, we have 10 meters total of LED strips on the inside of the grow chamber. Uh, each one of these was specifically chosen to match the wavelength and intensity uh, that a cannabis plant would need. For water, the bottom part of the unit is a three gallon water reservoir uh, with a nutrient and electronics compartment behind it. So we've taken these three main considerations, air, light, and water, and we've closely inspected uh, the requirements at every stage over the entire growth sequence of the cannabis plant. So we've made sure that our design and our system actually changes and adapts just as the plant needs it. Due to the different lighting requirements for the vegetative and the flowering stages of growth for the cannabis plant, uh, different types of LEDs had to be used. Uh, these included uh, white as well as red-blue LEDs. The LED strips were soldered first and then installed inside the box in an alternating order for even exposure. Depending on the stage of growth, either one or both of the LED types were supplying light for the plant using an Arduino. Also, as you can see, there is an extra layer of mylar sheeting installed inside the box to, in order to maximize the light that the plant receives from the LEDs through reflection. Hi, my name is Graham and I'm the construction lead for the Canaponics team. The primary concern in regards to the door was that it was properly sealed and that it was secure in the event of children attempting to open it. Given the choice of using a recycled 55 gallon drum, complications arose as a result of cutting the door out. When a large section of the barrel was removed, the internal tensions caused the opening to deform. The slight curvature in the opening made it difficult to get a proper seal on the hinge door. After many iterations and given the time and budget constraints, the ultimate approach was to use a flexible Lexan panel with tight cinching clasps. This would in turn adopt the shape of the opening to get a better seal against the vinyl weather lining on the sides of the barrel. Due to COVID-19, we were unfortunately unable to finish the top and bottom seals as they were shown in the drawings. The Lexan panel is also transparent, allowing for the user to continuously monitor their plants. Hi, my name is Tara and I'm the software and electrical lead for the Canapotics team. The electrical schematic, as you can see from the fritzing design, is separated into the top of the box and the bottom of the box. Um, the components were housed in units separate from the actual box itself to ensure nothing got ruined by climatic changes or water. Um, the Arduino is housed in a unit at the top of the box along with the DHT sensor that is utilized to measure temperature and humidity, the exhaust fan, and the Bluetooth module used to connect the Arduino with the Android mobile app. The bottom of the box consists of an intake fan, the 12 volt power supply, and the nutrient pumps. We chose to use relays instead of simple MOSFETs for the pumps um, and lighting because from past experience, MOSFETs tend to heat up quickly and due to our plant sensitivity to temperature, we did not want any added heat to the system. We created an Android mobile app that connects to the Arduino through a Bluetooth module. When opening the app, you must first select between manual and auto mode. Let's first click manual mode. After clicking manual mode, the user first connects the device to the Arduino via Bluetooth. 
Once doing so, the user can then read vapor pressure deficit or VPD data from the device. Manual mode also allows the user to turn on or off the RGB lights, the white lights, and the fans. If we go back to the main page, we can now click auto mode. In this mode, after connecting the device to the Arduino, the user can set the plant stage. For example, here we will set the plant stage to flowering and the Arduino will automatically turn on and off the fans and lights to set the desired VPD values for that plant stage. Moving on to air quality management, there were many considerations when developing the air delivery and outtake beyond the control of the humidity and temperature controls. Our intake fan is located near the bottom of the barrel at the base of the plant in order for the fresh air to circulate over the entire plant. One of the greatest causes for concern is the smell emitted from the plant during the flower stage, flowering stage due to tarpenes in the bud. Research has shown that using a carbon filter can help to eliminate about 90% of the odors eliminated by the plant. Mounted on the top of the growth experiment is a Lexan casing that helps show removable carbon filter in series with the particulate filter, as well as the outtake fan. Given the unexpected constraints on the project, we were unable to test the efficacy of this feature, though we are confident that it is functional. The original design of the air quality management system incorporated a CO2 dosing system that was designed to increase the CO2 content within the growth chamber. By increasing the CO2 content from an average of 400 parts per million to 1200 parts per million, we would, we would be able to increase the growth rate of the plant. Due to COVID-19 and budget complications, we were unable to add this feature. We considered many different kinds of hydroponic systems, but ultimately landed on a deep water culture. So deep water culture hydroponics uh, involves a, a net cup with some sort of substrate inside. For our canoponic system, it's a rock wool cube surrounded in hydrogen or expanded clay pebbles. This provides a little bit of support for the plant. The roots from the plant can then grow down into the nutrient reservoir where the whole system is suspended above. The nutrient dosing system is located at the bottom rear of the unit. Uh, this provides easy access for the nutrients to flow into the reservoir while still being waterproof and uh, maintained separately. There's an array of four peristaltic pumps. Uh, there's three pumps directly for the three-part hydroponic nutrient solution. Uh, this is off the shelf. Uh, we intend users to purchase the one quart bottle size, screw, unscrew the cap, and then they can put it directly in the system and place a modified cap on with some tubing for the peristaltic pumps to connect to. The fourth peristaltic pump is an optional pH buffer. The nutrient reservoir itself is three gallons. Uh, the user must empty and refill the reservoir every two weeks. Also in the water reservoir is uh, the air stones for oxygenation of the water and also a temperature probe to monitor the temperature of the nutrient solution. As with many projects in the real world, conflicts often arise that require rescheduling, delays, or cancellations. Unfortunately for this project, our project scheduling had to be drastically changed due to the COVID-19 crisis. Our initial schedule, as you can see on the screen, has our final product and design and innovation date uh, milestone set for April 8th, 2020. However, due to the self-isolation requirements set by the government, the team updated the Gantt chart with several modifications. The minimum viable product was still created to the extent it could be, as shown previously. However, our final product, which includes aesthetics and configuration of the climate control system, was not completed. Instead of having design and innovation day as our last milestone, we have our project completion video instead. As you can see, our total spendings ended up being very close to our initial $500 budget. What needs to be taken into account is that some of the components were not purchased because the group members supplied them. However, most of these were small electrical components that would not be changing the production cost too much. It should also be noted that we did not account for the cost of the cannabis seeds because there are going to be an additional purchase for the user. In terms of safety, our team has taken a very cautious approach from machining and the construction of the final product to the design and implementation. Given the proximity of our reservoir and electronic components, it is important that everything is properly sealed to ensure a safe product. Given that the product is intended for the growth of cannabis, it is also sensitive that the grow chamber is completely secure. This was accomplished by adding a lock to the door. 
This is intended to keep the plant away from underaged and unwanted users. As a final note about safety, we found it important to mention that during the COVID-19 pandemic, all group activity was done online for the safety of all the group members. As a result, only one member of the team was engaged in delivering the best, the best possible physical prototype. And thanks to this effort, we have completed a substantial portion of the project, although not as much as we would have liked to. In order to meet our goal to make our product recyclable, we chose an HTPE barrel since it is accepted at most recycling centers and is one of the easiest polymers to recycle. It is also FDA approved, meaning it can be used for storage purposes if the product is no longer usable. Also, most of the electrical components that we have used can be easily replaced individually, so the usability of the whole product is not affected. And if the user decides that they don't want to grow cannabis anymore, our product can definitely be used towards other hydroponic processes, for example, growing tomatoes. There are a number of improvements and points for further development that the team has identified uh, if this project were to go any further. Um, first of all, we want to do a lot more testing and experimentation for the VPD control, um, potentially having to add some sort of active cooling or ultrasonic foggers to increase the humidity um, if it turns out that it actually needed that. UV lights is another thing that could be implemented. Uh, adding UV lighting near the later stages of flowering growth, so in the last two weeks before harvesting, um, can actually increase trichome production uh, leading to a higher THC and CBD content in the final product. Any kind of further development would have to come with procuring a cannabis research license from the Government of Canada. Um, this is something that uh, takes several months to achieve and can cost up to $20,000 we've been told, so likely not something that this project team will pursue um, on our own.